hey so buddies hello and welcome back to the channel if you're just joining us here for the very first time you're most welcome my name is joy and i am the tutor and the convener for this channel way by angli in today's video i'll be showing you how i made this beautiful kente dress with a basket yoke design and a three-tier gather just below it is a sleeveless sleeveless dress with a zipper at the back just sit back relax and let's jump right into the business of the day so yeah as you can see i'm using five yards of kente for this design my lining my fleece interfacing for padding my line interfacing for the lining and also interfacing for the fabric here i'm also using a bias for the yoke part of that dress so i'm using a bias binding here are a list of measurements i'll be needing for this um tutorial so yeah i'm gonna head to mark my bust point and then from the shoulder i'm marking my under bust measurement which is 14.25 i'm gonna head to rule that across on both lines like so in my round under bust i'm going to be measuring it out and then dividing it by four whatever value it gives me i'm going to be you know marking it out like so on my basic bodies block as usual if you're an og on this channel you know we always start with our basic bodies block so when you're marking out that under bust measurement make sure you skip the dart the dart legs and then mark it out so after marking it out the remnant is 1.75 and that 1.75 i've gone ahead to share it on both sides of the dart leg so i'm going to be giving one to the left and 0 0.75 to the right hand like so after that with my straight rule i'm going to go ahead and link this so with a broken line to the boss point like so after i've done that i'm going to link these two points like so then after that i'm going to measure out that that broken line and divide it into three then mark one third of it down below all i'm just trying to do is to get my bust curve without making it too pointy so from the bust point i'm going to go up 0 0.5 inches up and 0 0.5 inch down then with my french curve i'll connect those points like so and then connect the straight point like so doing the same thing on the right hand side of this pattern also so after i've done that i'm going to go ahead and link that under bust point to the waist point just like you're seeing me doing after this i want to get the yoke part that's the depth of that yoke here i'm marking out six inches and then at the shoulder tip i'm coming in one inch you know because this is a sleeveless uh, dress i don't want it to be too much at the shoulder so at the back neck i came down zero uh, zero point seven five below just so it's not too high so yeah i'm going ahead to mark out the area i'll be cutting out and then going in with my scissors i'm going to be cutting out my pattern like so just so i'll be able to do the alteration to the desired style so basically i'm just cutting it out that's the back and here is the front the back is very simple it doesn't have too much design so yeah i'm going down again six inch from the neckline and from that neckline i came down one inch so that it's not be too choky at the neck so that part is also going to be going off so now i want to transfer i want to close up my dart so that i'll be able to you know work on the yoke part you know mark out the sweetheart neckline for the yoke so yeah basically what i'm doing is to close up that shoulder that is as simple as that you know you just slash it open and then you close it up like so like you see me do after closing it up i'm going to go ahead to um you know seal it like so and then mark out my princess um mark out my um what what they call it mark out the sweetheart neckline for the yoke so yeah i've marked out six inch from that shoulder and also six, six inches from the neckline and then going with my french curve i'm just going to mark it out like so now there's no hard and fast rule to this you can just freestyle as you want but then you want to do it in such a way that there's enough space for your yoke and then it's not too exposing but if you like so showing enough skin then you can of course bring that down so yeah i'm cutting out my yoke area yeah i'm cutting out the armhole i'm just going to slash this open like so so i have my mm, center front part and 
the side part so here what i'm doing basically is just to mark the notch point so that whenever when i'm joining this piece together i can always match it match it accurately so i'm going to just keep that aside after this year i'm cutting the neckline remember i came down by one inch so that it's not too choky on my neck and then i came in from the arm from the armhole part i came in because it's a sleeveless dress you know just sewing out my working out my style lines yeah i'm matching up the shoulder just to make sure it matches now i'm coming to the yoke part which is like the um juice of this tutorial you remember that yoke part is going to be on fold so what i'm doing basically here is to just cut it out i'm cutting it out on fold so that when i open it up it will replicate on the other side and while cutting i'm also adding my necessary allowances as you can see so here on the neckline i added 0 0.25 then other parts i added my 0 0.5 inch so yeah i've gone ahead to open it up and then it's time for me to start marking the basket line that's the lines that are going to form the basket yoke this is going to serve as a guideline so when i'm sewing in the bias i can just follow that line accurately so that's what i'm going ahead to do you know marking out the line and also marking out the opposite lines that will be intercepting it yeah you want to be as creative as possible you can you know make your basket wider you know so that the holes are more open or you can make it more more close together so yeah this is the skirt part of this dress i'm gonna have to mark the hip line this is the hip line that i'm marking for that my basic bodies block i usually don't like using the down part of the basic bodies block because i don't really like the fit it gives so i just create mine so yeah to get the knee line i i'm gonna have to mark my knee line from my waist to my from my shoulder to my knee line is um 36 inches so remember my half length is 17.5 i just made sure to mark that out first to leave that out on the tape before marking my knee line so after this year i'm marking my waistline yeah from the pattern the waistline is 8.5 so i've gone ahead to mark 8.5 now remember that on the pattern the waist the waistline is wider than the back the waistline in front is wider than the back waistline this is because we are bigger in front than at the back the good thing about the pattern is that any part that is bulky it gives it more um fabric or more pattern and any part that is uh, slimmer it gives it less so on the bust area of the pattern you find out that the front bust is wider than the back bust then on the waist area you find out that the waist area is wider than the back waist now coming to the hip part now i made sure that my back hip you know just to give me that bum effect if you've watched my tutorial on how to sew a pencil skirt you find out that i did that bum effect like how to sew a pencil skirt with bum effect i'll be linking that in the description box so that you can go ahead and watch that tutorial so i made sure to do that to make sure um to i didn't share the hip equally on the back and the front i didn't share that hip equally like usually i give my back more hip so in this case if my back is 40 i give my back say 21 inch if my hip sorry is 40 i give my back 21 inch and then i give my front hip 19 inch so that um 19 inches so that it's not evenly this just a trick for you to get a well contoured fit on your garment because you're not same size in front and at the back so this is just a trick especially if you want to you know get the right fit and be a professional in this game of sewing so yeah as you can see for my hip my hip is 40 inches i'm giving my back 21 inch and then i'm giving the front 19 inch so the front hip from the center front i'll go ahead and do 19 divided by 2 and mark that out then my round knee is 34 i'm doing 34 divided by 4 and mark that out so with my french curve i'm just going to link these three points like so and then go ahead and walk on the waist part now remember we are fuller on the tummy area so i'm just going to come down so that it won't have any excess there it just helps it to get a better fit so i came down one inch on that center um, the waist part so now i'm going ahead to work on the back i just want to measure out the amount of um, paper space i need for the back using the hip measurements remember the hip the back hip now is 21 so i did 21 divided by 2 and got that then before marking that out so here for the back remember we are doing the bomb effect i just came in from the center back i came in one inch then marked my 
um point that's my dart point so that it matches with the upper part of this dress now for the front of this dress the the front side i'm not going to be having any i'm not going to be having any dart in front it's also a way for you to make it more contoured and more fitted i usually don't like putting that in the front of my skirt or in the front of my gown so the front is going to be dartless that's the skirt part of this gown is going to be dartless but for the back is going to have a dart and usually when i'm sewing my dress you always want to make sure that the darts match this is one thing that shows that you're a professional or you are good at sewing or you understand contour fits and you know body um shapes and body anatomy so the darts up and down must match especially when there's a demarcation at the waist make sure that the darts matches so yeah i'm marking out i've linked that waist part to the hip part and yeah i'm measuring it out like so just to make sure that it matches with the upper part now the waist at the back is 6.5 so now from that hip line i came down six inches down you remember we are doing the bomb effect stuff i came down six inches and went in one inch so yeah i'm linking it to the hip and also at the center back i'm also linking the hip to that part that i came down by and went in one inch by so with that i just drew a straight line now I'm coming down to the knee line like so that remember the knees the round knee is 34 34 divided by 4 is 8.5 and i'm gonna have to mark that out like so linking it and also labeling the back now working on the dart working on the back that my back that here i'm using 5.5 inch and then i've just marked it out and then linked the two dart legs to that point yeah i'm basically labeling it out the side the center front which is going to be on fold and then the center back which is going to be divided now the next thing i've gone ahead to do here i've marked out my i've ironed out my interfacing and also my fleece interfacing for the bust area leaving making sure to leave that 0 0.5 inch so that it's not bulk key at that part when i'm sewing it so that it just goes smooth and clean i've done i had to do the same thing for the lining now for the back i've notched my dart point and also gonna have to do the same thing for the lining of the back now here is the um down part i'm gonna have to cut it out and leave the necessary allowance i'm using a 0 0.5 inch for my joining and 1.5 for the side seam because you know i might eventually add and i need enough allowance to you know ease it out so yeah i'm joining the pieces together you know starting with the front part joining the main fabric and also the lining you know this the sewing part of this dress is quite self-explanatory so yeah this is the back i'm sewing in my dart first sewing the dart for the main fabric and also the dart for the lining of the back yeah i'm using a six inches for the dart length so marking the six inches making sure to mark that out so i'm doing the same thing for the lining and the fabric and then joining it at the neck you want to notch after notching you top stitch on the lining after top stitching the next thing i'm doing here is to close up the zip at the center back close up my armhole then close up the side and then we after that i just flip it open and do the same thing for the opposite side of course you know just seal up the necessary part leaving just the shoulder and then the waist part open because you're going to be needing it to turn it with the front so yeah coming to the mask red in this tutorial which is the basket yoke you see after i've marked out the uh, lines on the yoke what you just want to do basically is to join it to start sewing it now when you're sewing with the bias here i use almost three rows of bias for this yoke you want to face the two bias that's you want to face the the, you, you don't want to just carry a bias and sew because the rough part of after, after you're done with your dress the rough part of the bias is going to be showing you want to place use two bias as two lips of bias the wrong side facing each other and then you start sewing on the line if you sew with just one strip of bias the roughness is going to be showing at the back and you don't want it to look so rough at the back so you want it to look you want it to look very neat at the back that's why you want to you know face it together it's actually going to consume a lot of bias you get but if maybe you just want to risk it and just use one the implication is that the roughness of the bias you know the rough part of the bias which is you know the 
two lips of the bias meeting at the back of the bias is going to be showing on the wrong side of your dress and secondly is going to be lighter on that yoke part so you know using two biases uh, close together is going to give it more structure it's going to give it more structure but if you use one it's not going to have enough structure but if you want to manage bias then by all means go ahead and use one it's still going to give you the effect of the you know yoke the basket yoke so now here yeah, after sewing my bias i've gone ahead to you know sew the neckline like so reinforcing it before three minutes off you just want to sew that neckline following the paper also sew the armhole sew this um sweetheart neck part like so just sew it together before trimming it off like so now after this the next thing i've gone ahead to do is with a bias again i've um piped this neck you know you just want to seal it up using a bias like you see me do i've gone ahead to seal that up like so starting from the back you want to start from the back before you know flipping it to the front part of this dress now after i've done that next thing i am doing here is to match it up with my fabric to make sure that it matches like you can see the yoke part is a bit bigger so i'm gonna have to mark that excess so that i'll be able to cut it out you know to cut out that excess i also go ahead and match it on the shoulder part because you want it to be very correct before you seal we are going to be sealing that armhole part so that's why i'm matching it up to make sure it's correct so yeah as you can see i'm trimming off the excess before going in with my bias binding to you know pipe that rough mouth to pipe the edge so yeah i'm piping it after piping it i'm going to go ahead and then join it to the fabric the main fabric in front so yeah this is me basically joining it to the fabric you know you want to join it to the main fabric before turning it to with the lining so because my princess um because my sweetheart neck is not too deep it was quite easy to join so yeah this is me sealing it up with the lining starting with the armhole on both sides before now sewing the neckline this is very self-explanatory but i'm going to do my best especially because of our beginners so that they can follow and know exactly what we are doing so yeah i'm sealing it up and also sealing the sides like so you know taking in my necessary allowance yeah I'm, after sealing it i flipped it to the right side pressed it and then sealed the down part so yeah this is me joining it to the shoulder using the back um part or the back dress to sandwich the front shoulder in between the the lining and the main fabric of the back dress you see this is what i did basically you know just flip it make sure the front lining the front uh, shoulder is sandwiched between the back shoulder and after that this is me basically shaping my fabric is as easy as that make sure you iron as you go in between i was pressing all these things so now coming to this uh, skirt part of this dress yeah i've gone ahead to seal the sides right side facing each other right side of the lining facing the right side of the fabric i'm sealing the two sides then turning it to the flipping it open and then sealing the down parts and then the waist parts here we are not doing inside sewing so everything is going to be out because i want a stretch whereby i can easily adjust it to my feet in case i slim down or i add so for the back i went ahead and sew in my darts first before sealing the two sides just like i did for the front sealing the two sides and then flipping it to the right side and then sealing the um the down part and the waist part just like i did for the front so yeah this is me sewing the hem of my tear this is the biggest tear that's the let's call it the third tier so yeah i'm sewing the hem remember this dress is going to have an opening in front from the knee part the three tier has an opening in front so after sealing the hem i'm sealing the side that's the center front and doing the same thing for the second tier which is the middle tier i'm folding the hem and also sealing the center front like so then for the um for the third tier i actually did a full circle a full circle for the the first tier sorry that's the, the smallest tier i made it to be a full circle so that it will be fuller ideally this dress is going it's supposed to be like if it's supposed to be circle 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 for the three tier but because of limited fabric if you're going to actually do a circle you will need up to eight yards of fabric but because i was trying to work with my five yards 
of fabric i just made the the second and the third tier to be rectangular then the first tier was the only one i cut as a circle skirt or as a circle um a circle piece you know a circle skirt the way a circle skirt is so i did that and made sure that it was wide enough for me to gather it so here yeah, i'm sewing the center front of this first year and after sewing it i'll go ahead and you know do a basting stitch so that i'll be able to gather it so this is me doing a basting stitch on the biggest tier which is the third tier i'm doing a basting stitch you want to do that twice so that you'll be able to reinforce it when you're pulling it doesn't snap always sew your basting stitch twice so that it doesn't snap if you do it once there's a tendency for it to snap and then you have to start afresh which is quite time consuming so yeah i'm just you know pulling it to form the gathers i'm going to be doing it for the first the second and the third tier making sure that at the end of the day it's going to give me 34 inches which is my round knee and which is what i'm going to be needing for the round knee so yeah basically i'm just shaping my fabric i went ahead and joined it at the dart first making sure that it matches at the dart i'm always very particular about the my two darts matching so i made sure to match it there first before going ahead to shape it so for the waist remember it was 8.5 on fold 8.5 which is 17 my waist part in front is 17 then the back was 6.5 which is 13 so 17 plus 13 is going to give you 30 my waist is 30 inches then for the hip for the shaping i did 19 in front 21 at the back which is 40 inches at the end of the day you know these things are those tricks that make your clothes more fitted and snatched and more contoured so yeah for the zip from the waist i came down 10 inches and then i'm just going to seal it down and then this is basically me gathering the last year yes i didn't gather the last year so yeah i'm just gathering going ahead to do a basting stitch for the last year and then gathering it after making sure it's 34 inches i'm just going to bring in the first and the second tier and just place it on top joining the three of them together before sewing it to the main fabric so guys if you're really enjoying this tutorial please do not forget to hit that subscribe button like this video comment if you have any thoughts and observation and i'll do it to respond like this video share it with your friends turn on the bell notifications so that you get notified whenever i post new video here on the channel way by angli we always have a good time this channel is all about pattern making the business of sewing the business of um dressmaking sewing tutorials you know i talk about my blogging journey my youtube journey as a tailor so yeah this is me basically joining the three tier to the main fabric after joining that to the main fabric i'm going to just go ahead and put my zip which i did off camera after fixing my zip the next thing i'm going to be doing is to remove that paper on the basket of course you have to remove the paper on the basket yoke because you can't be wearing it with paper now so you have to remove the paper so yeah this is just me peeling off the paper this was like a very satisfying experience i must say i actually like peeling things off so yeah i was just you know taking my time to peel this off after peeling it off your dress is basically ready so you see this is a very beautiful dress i love the look of everything the kente is so beautiful i like the print this is actually kente print kente design this is like an indigenous ghana design the kente print so thank you so much for coming with me on this ride thank you for, so much for staying with me till the very end until next time see you bye